released since then, like George Herbert Walker Bush, clearly involved in it himself. That's what the FBI files show. If they've had 25 years to doctor these, why not then make it a big thing in our face where it's the CIA saying it's Lee Harvey Oswald and then he supposedly worked for the Russians or something. That would fit into a whole Russian phobia thing. Uh, I mean, just who knows with all the forgeries and fake birth certificates and everything else we've seen, uh, what's going to be coming out of this? I mean, if you have St. John Hunt's dad, E. Howard Hunt, who got arrested that day in Dallas, saying he ran the operation, you got 90 plus percent of Americans you know, knowing the truth. Uh, you've got the fact that uh, the credibility in government's at a 7% level. Uh, I think we've already won this war. So if we battle this battle again, it's the only chance they've got at us only having a Pyrrhic victory because then they can pull stunts. Well, Alex, uh, I think that your concerns are well-founded, <clears throat> although my source is at least one lifer uh, in the Central Intelligence Agency tells me that the agency has been caught uh, by surprise. They did not expect this move from President Donald Trump. They evidently believed that they could talk him out of it, and therefore now their fallback position will be to try to redact and hold back large swaths of information. It was uh, Dr. Jerry Corsi here at InfoWars who first pointed out to me that the data dumped by the National Archives in this past July, the first small batch of documents pertaining to the Kennedy assassination were so heavily redacted and so much of the material was withheld for purposes of national security that they were completely and totally unusable. They were worthless. In other words, my concern now is that the intelligence agencies uh, countermand the president, that they nullify his bold decision here uh, using a backdoor bureaucratic process to uh, to neutralize the information that the president has ordered released. And if that happens, if there is widespread cover-up, we here at InfoWars will be the first to let the American people know. Roger, that's a great point. I think that's where this is going. And, and, and I agree they've been blindsided because you notice on Friday they're like, oh, Roger Stone is full of baloney. Uh, we've talked to the intelligence sources. Pompeo, the president's not going to release it. And then the next morning, the president tweets, yes, barring new info, I will next week. And so that deadline is basically uh, basically here now. So uh, that signals, we can put the article back on screen, we're just showing folks, where they said on Friday, Trump likely to block release of classified JFK files. Boy, they were eating crow the next morning. No, I had a call from uh, NBC uh, on Thursday night. I had spoken to the president, very friendly, upbeat conversation that morning. Uh, and I had made what I thought was a compelling but brief case for the release of these documents. The president asked a few pithy questions, and then he said he would think about it. Now, from the tone of his questions and the content of his questions, I was optimistic that the president was going to do the right thing, and I think he has done the right thing. But I think he has caught the uh, Central Intelligence Agency and the other intelligence agencies by surprise. Now, uh, it is uh, typical of these agencies to stall, to obfuscate, and to cover up as much as possible. Why would they do so? Why would they be concerned of events of more than 50 years ago in which all the principal participants are deceased? The answer is they're still using the exact same tactics, the lies, the leaks, the forgeries, the omissions. Uh, we have seen them use the same kind of tactics on this president as they used on that president because he challenges the power of the deep state and he challenges, in this case, the power of the neocons who had already decided we were going to war over Syria. Don't worry about a thing. Hillary has promised us the expansion of the proxy war. And that is the seat of their opposition to Donald Trump and why our intelligence agencies, just as they undermine Kennedy, now seek to undermine Donald J. Trump. Clearly, they're panicking. Clearly, the establishment can't stand what's happening. And we just saw the footage, let's cue it up, about two hours ago, the security breach at the Capitol, a idiot throwing two by three little Russian flags, six or seven of them, at the president screaming traitor traitor you're a russian agent you know forget tax cuts god forbid you know this evil russian agent Trump is treason. 
wants to get the economy Call going again. Reason. As everything they said about you, myself, the president, has just like you said a year and a half ago, first, off the Panama Papers, uh, papers and other sources, they kept asking, how does Stone know we're involved with the Russians and that Podesta's time in the barrel's coming? Because it was in the Panama paper documents that he was on the Russian payroll. Now it's all coming out, tarmac meetings, Mueller giving them uranium, six companies that Mueller part owns, hundreds of millions of dollars from the Russians. It turns out that there was a Russian penetration, and it was of the Democratic Party, which is the classic party always spreading their legs to the Russian, uh, GRU and FSB and KGB and all the rest of it over the years. I mean, it's just dumbfounding. It's stunning that, that of course, oh, yeah, the Patriots were on the payroll of the Russians. You know, famous red hunters that you work for like Nixon. We're on, we're on the, I mean, you're, you're a guy that helped you know, scoop up Russian spy networks in the 80s. This is ridiculous and now it's blown up their face but when i go out tonight in downtown austin i guarantee you there's going to be people as i'm taking my wife downtown to dinner there will be people that run up and scream f you russian when they work for the people that were working for the russians yeah it's really outrageous look i was drawn to politics because of the anti-communism of senator barry goldwater i stayed in politics because of the anti-communism of governor and then president ronald reagan I'm a man who had actual family members mowed down by Russian tanks in Budapest in 1956. I loathe the Russian system. I loathe totalitarianism. Uh, and I loathe the way they treat Christians and gays and others in their society. Uh, so the, uh, the idea that we would traffic with the Russians to affect the outcome of the U.S. election is insulting, as well as patently, completely, provably false. Alex, I think there have been two events in the last two weeks that really have reversed the entire Russian narrative and turned it into a boomerang on the Democrats. The first one is obvious. We now know that FBI Director Mueller, FBI Director Comey, Assistant FBI Director McCabe, and Ron Rosenstein, the de facto Attorney General of the United States today, um, were in charge of the investigation into Russian bribery and the efforts by the Russians uh, to use illegal methods methods and bribes for uranium to one to the Clintons to uh to and they ordered the investigation killed uranium one. and they ordered the investigation killed that's the treason let's let's go out to break with this idiot who's known as Ryan Clayton he works for the Huffington Post and is an Antifa Soros minion confirmed so a Soros snake throwing Russian flags at the president screaming traitor when his fingers ought to be pointed right back in his fat ugly face here it is Why are you talking about tax cuts when you should be talking about treason? Sir. Why is Congress <laughs> talking about tax cuts when they should be talking about treason? Uh, this president is fired with agents of the Russian government to steal an election. We should be talking about treason in Congress, not about tax cuts. All right, folks, we're going to go to break. We're going to come back with Roger Stone. On the other side, this is the InfoWar, NewsWars.com, InfoWars.com. Spreading those links is an act of rebellion, and I salute you. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Stone is here with us in his uh, clean shirt, new shoes. That is a sharp-looking jacket he's wearing. Me, I'm kind of being a little weird today with my periwinkle uh, blue with my... Uh, Electric blue, so we're to, I guess I'm going to a disco tonight or something. Just having some fun here, folks. So much going on. It's crazy. As we predicted, the elites are moving to sacrifice the Clintons, just like Weinstein. But the Clintons and others are hanging on for dear life. Really toxic. The party is in danger of completely collapsing. The Republican Party's fighting for its life. I want to ask Roger Stone about that in a moment and let him take over. But briefly, ladies and gentlemen, trying to brand uh, the Republicans' establishment is invincible. And, and, you know, this new liberty, uh, no rhinos movement that you and I and others have been spearheading that Bannon's now on the bandwagon with, and that's great. I mean, what is that going on? Is that Trump playing good cop, bad cop? Show's yours. Well, Alex, first of all, I, I always thought Steve Bannon would be more effective from the outside. Like us, he's a rabble rouser. He's a street fighter. Uh, and, uh, you know, he really is uh, a revolutionary at heart. Uh, 
Uh, and I think that he has correctly identified the fault line in the Republican Party uh, between those who believe in the radical reform party of Donald J. Trump and those who are for the status quo, who like things just the way they are. The big corporate money, the special interest campaign contributions pour in, you get reelected, you really don't mix it up with the Democrats other than maybe for the television cameras once in a while, uh, and everybody goes out to dinner afterwards and they slap each other on the back. The American people, I think, are tired of that. Now, there is no question that Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan uh, are very persuasive guys, and they are in the president's face constantly pointing out how much he needs them and how much he needs the support of the Republican caucuses, which sadly they haven't been very adept at delivering. In all fairness, the House under Paul Ryan has passed some 300 bills that the president has asked for that the Senate has never taken up. So it is unfair to a certain degree to throw Ryan into the same bucket with Mitch McConnell every time. That said, the president realizes that the Bannon movement is helpful to him because it gives him leverage. And Donald Trump is a man who likes to keep everybody guessing about his next move. As I like to say, the one thing that is predictable about Donald Trump is that he's entirely unpredictable. He does have, I think, enormous leverage in these primaries. Uh, I don't think the lesson of Alabama is that the president has no juice. I think the lesson of Alabama is Trumpism is more important than Trump himself. That it is the principles that he ran on that are manifest. And well, most I mean, look important. at look at Austria. The look of at Alabama Italy. Elected the most Trump-like candidate. But I mean, everywhere. Patriot, populist are winning all over the world. Just this week, we've seen it in Italy. We've seen it in the Czech Republic. We've seen it in Austria. I mean, this this is global awakening. Trump just rode in on his surfboard, which is great, but this is a lot bigger than Trump. I, I totally agree. And I think what you're going to see here, Alex, is the president is not going to support all of Steve Bannon's challenger candidates, nor is he going to support all of Mitch McConnell's incumbents. <clears throat> He's going to pick and choose. He is going to, on the basis of sophisticated uh, polling and political calculation, figure out where he can have the greatest impact. But I'll say this. I would not want to be an incumbent United States senator running against uh, my president. Now, when they say, oh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jeff Flake voted with the president 97 percent of the time. Yeah, they vote for, with us on National Hamburger Week. But where are you on the tough votes like Obamacare's repeal or the upcoming tax legislation? So don't be fooled by these phony statistics where they say, oh, he supported the president 90 percent of the time. Yes, on innocuous party line votes. But where are you on the big, That's on right. the big issues? Stay with us. Are More you? with Roger Stone straight ahead from New York City. Um, I think that any time that special counselor Robert Mueller is out of the news, perhaps the supporters of the president begin to breathe easier. In my opinion, that is a mistake. Mr. Mueller has been essentially a legal executionary for both the Bushes and the Clintons. We know definitively when FBI Director Comey was fired by President Donald Trump that Robert Mueller auditioned, in essence, uh, interviewed for that job the very next day. He was passed over. That, and of course, that of course creates the potential for a massive conflict of interest. Um, he could be uh, biased against the president because the president decided to appoint someone other than Mr. Mueller to that FBI position. Yesterday, however, we learned uh, from an extraordinary news story that Mr. Mueller has been allowed to invest in a hedge fund controlled and run by the billionaire uh, George Soros. And in this particular case, since the necessary opening ante was a minimum 
of $10 million, Mr. Mueller was admitted to the fund without the required funding. In other words, he was getting preferential treatment. Now, add to that the fact that we've established that the Uranium One investigation, the Justice Department investigation into the bribery uh, by the Russians of American officials uh, and American business people, uh, as well as the massive bribes to Bill and Hillary Clinton and the Clinton Foundation that ended up uh, securing the approval of the transfer of 20 percent of the enriched uranium uh, to a company controlled completely by the Kremlin. And, and, and i got to say this, then, now that it's all come out, because I, I just can't help but ask this, how do they continue on with a fake investigation when it's like Hitler sitting on the Nuremberg trial as the chief justice, or in somebody's divorce trial, the husband or the wife is the judge over the trial? I mean, he's got to recuse, he's got to drop it, the whole thing's a fraud. This is just ridiculous. It's no wonder, like you said a year and a half ago, they've said we're all Russian agents because they are. Well, but unfortunately, what's missing today are the New York Times and Washington Post editorials uh, calling on Mr. Mueller to step down because of this stunning new conflict of interest, which we have just now discovered. The mainstream media never targets the wrongdoing of the bad guys, in this case, embittered liberal Democrats and neocons unhappy about the fact that Hillary Clinton is not president and can't give them their expanded proxy war in Syria. So uh, we don't ever have the uh, luxury of having a docile uh, or absent mainstream media. They're usually calling for our heads, in most cases, on the basis of completely trumped up and fraudulent information. Reminds me just the other day of Anderson Cooper insisting that InfoWars was wrong about the fact that George Soros was, in fact, a Nazi collaborator. Alex, you were forced to take actual footage and show it right here at InfoWars in which he admits in his own words that if he didn't do it, somebody else would have. By the way, it's worse they than that. in denial. The Spanish government's now saying the police didn't beat up any women or anybody else in Catalonia. They're saying that's fake news. It's just next level lying. Since you uh, mentioned how it's stunning, uh, the connections of the Clintons and, the, and, and, and Mueller to the Russians, uh, here's Newt Gingrich saying the same thing on Fox News. First of all, I do think it's useful not just to look at Russia, but to look at Saudi Arabia, to look at China. I mean, lots of countries have figured out that hiring a lobbyist, giving money to a foundation, endowing a yeah. university, the level of foreign money penetrating this country uh, is very disturbing. And I think that uh, we ought to have some kind of congressional hearings just to set the record of how many different countries are trying to influence us and to remind us that a lot of these so-called profound was stunning. Uh, there you have it. Newt Gingrich, still one of the most articulate conservatives out there and able to capsulize these things in a way the American people can understand them. The entire Russian narrative is boomeranging on the Democrats. And what an irony that it wraps up Mueller, Comey, McCabe, and Rod Rosenstein. And that's why they're all so now, fatalistic to get the president, because they're protecting themselves. If they don't get him, they'll all go to jail for what they actually did. Uh, the linchpin on this is quite obviously Jeff Sessions. Now, uh, I have been a critic of Attorney General Sessions on this program. Um, I liked him immensely when he was in the United States Senate. I cheered his appointment as Attorney General because I thought he would be a tough, no-nonsense uh, federal prosecutor interested in the rule of law. Uh, instead, he's proposed a return to minimum sentences, which is unnecessary because the Congress set up a no-face commission uh, that can set uh, federal minimum and mandatory sentences. Uh, it is interesting that the, the late Supreme Court Justice Anton Scalia objected to the appointment of this body to take the heat off of the politicians. What it means is the commission can set rules and a floor under which judicial sentences cannot drop, meaning the 
prisons will be flooded with people who are guilty of nonviolent crimes or people who have harmed no one. Jeff Sessions has been gung-ho for asset forfeiture, working out new rules in which the states and the feds together can seize your assets before you have been convicted of a crime and they get to split the booty. Sounds unconstitutional to me. Uh, it is famously known that Jeff Sessions wants to crack down on the 29 states where the people in those states have decided to legalize medicinal marijuana at complete variance with the position of President Donald Trump, who says this is a state's rights issue. Let the states decide. Uh, and then, of course, there is his stunning failure to prosecute Hillary Clinton. Now, I was Boyd last week, and he said there was an investigation, but even as we speak, the Trump Justice Department is in federal court seeking to block the release of Hillary's emails. That's right. You heard it right. The Trump Justice Department is seeking to block further release of Hillary Clinton's emails. What about the need for transparency and the right of the American people to know? Which side is Jeff Sessions on? I have now, I think, solved this riddle. Jeff Sessions is the Attorney General of the United States in name only. Uh, he is being managed and handled by a coterie of deep state uh, aides. And in fact, Rod Rosenstein, the former U.S. Attorney for Maryland, a liberal Republican uh, who I guarantee you did not vote for Donald Trump, is the de facto Attorney General of the United States. Uh, Jeff Sessions, I think, should pack it in. You may be a critic of Rudy Giuliani, but if he were your attorney general today, Bill and Hillary would be on their way to the pokey. I'm Roger Stone, and I'll be right back. If you I'm Roger Stone sitting in for Alex Jones, and you're on InfoWars. To finish the last segment, Jeff Sessions has become a total and complete captive of the establishment assistant attorney generals surrounding him. This is why there has been no effort to prosecute Hillary or Bill Clinton or the Clinton Foundation. There has been no effort to prosecute Loretta Lynch for her uh, illegal activities in the cover-up of Hillary's email scandal. There has been no effort to prosecute officials at the Internal Revenue Service um, who were harassing free enterprise and conservative-oriented organizations. Uh, and there has stunningly been no action whatsoever against the Obama national security apparatus. We know, based on uh, documents handed down by the super-secret FISA court in November that the Obama administration illegally surveilled as many as 30,000 Americans for political purposes. Let me be more specific. One out of 10 government conducted surveillances were illegally of U.S. citizens. Why? It's pretty simple. This is political espionage, but the dirty work was done not by uh, a band of Cuban burglars brought in from the outside, but by the actual intelligence services of the United States government, your tax dollars at work. This is clearly a far more serious crime than anything anticipated or executed at Watergate, the wholesale spying on American American citizens in violation of the U.S. Constitution. Yet so far, uh, Ms. Rice, Mr. Clapper, Admiral Brennan, uh, uh, pardon me, Admiral Rogers, Mr. Brennan, uh, presumably Valerie Jarrett, they have paid uh, no price whatsoever, leading me to wonder what exactly Jeff Sessions is doing over there. Perhaps he is so controlled, so handled by the circle around him that what he says and does in these congressional hearings is actually meaningless. But until we get an attorney general who is committed to the rule of law and who is prepared to hold Democrats to the exact same standards to which Republicans have been held, there will be no justice. No justice 
no peace, as a friend of mine likes to say. Uh, I notice also uh, that uh, one uh, member of Congress particularly deserves real accolades in the president's decision to release the uh, still classified John F. Kennedy assassination documents. That would be Congressman Walter B. Jones of North Carolina, who courageously put together a bipartisan coalition of both Republicans and Democrats, uh, right, left, and center, supporting full transparency and the release of these documents. My hat is off to a great public service servant, Congressman Walter Jones. In this case, he has done the American people an enormous uh, and beneficial service. Uh, I also noted yesterday that uh, Casa Pacifica, the California home of President Richard Milhouse Nixon, now on the market. Uh, a beautiful uh, 1920s-style Spanish architecture, 10 bathrooms, uh, 11 baths. Uh, this is going for a mere $63 million. Uh, no, I will not be moving in any time soon. Um, but it is an exquisite uh, property where history was made. Uh, Brezhnev visited uh, the president there, Chinese dignitaries after the opening to China visited President Nixon there. It is there that Nixon famously loved to walk on the beach. Uh, and yes, he did sometimes wear wingtips. Uh, if you get out that way, Casa, Casa Pacifica, uh, you really should check it out. It is quite extraordinary. The other recommendations that I make regularly to any of my friends who are visiting Southern California, there are two must stops. One is the Richard Nixon Presidential uh, Library and Museum, and the other is the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in Simi Valley. Both of these are extraordinary experiences, great for families. If you're out that way, I strongly urge you to take both of them in. We are uh, also uh, interested in a story that I've been following uh, in which Michael Caputo, uh, who was dragged before the House Intelligence Committee, may yet be dragged before the Senate Intelligence Committee, simply on the basis of the fact that he worked for the Donald Trump campaign and that he once lived in Russia. In fact, he lived in Russia while working for the Bill Clinton administration, where he was sent to that country to attempt to foster democracy and promote the election, that's right, of Boris Yeltsin. Uh, Mr. Caputo uh, testified openly, freely, uh, and under oath for the House Intelligence Committee only to have Congresswoman Jackie Speer accuse him publicly of perjury, a crime. Ms. Speer was not present for Mr. Caputo's testimony, so therefore we must assume that she is basing her claim of perjury on a reading of the transcripts of Caputo's testimony. The problem with that, of course, is that Mr. Caputo himself is not allowed to obtain and have a copy of this transcript. Therefore, it makes it quite difficult for him to conduct uh, and defend himself. Now he has gone on the attack, filing specific complaints with the House Ethics Committee uh, and with the uh, division of the FBI that deals with uh, with uh, cyber crime since she made these charges uh, electronically. Uh, kudos to my